Chapter 2, starting at verse 8. The voice of my beloved, behold, he cometh leaping upon the mountains, skipping upon the hills. My beloved is like a roe or a young heart. Behold, he standeth behind our wall. He looketh forth at the windows, shewing himself through the lateness. My beloved spake and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. Amen. Does anybody have a song request? How about 166 in the red book?
stand up and praise Amen. God. Thank Him for another week in life. Thank Him for the rain and the sunshine. And, and He's so good to us. He just sends us what we need when we need it, don't we? And I just want to praise His holy name. I want to thank Him for my children, my grandchildren, and my daughter-in-law, and my son-in-law. And, and I just got a wonderful family, and I just want to praise Him and thank Him for that. Because Amen. I know that all good things come from God. Amen. And without God, there wouldn't be anything good. So I just want to praise His holy name and thank Him. Thank Him for all the things. You know, I'm just, uh, I really enjoy getting out and doing stuff that I really like to do. But the best thing is best to leave the stuff wrong that I can't handle and just come to the church and the preaching building and enjoy the comfort of the, of the good Lord of the Lord. That's it. Bless you. Let's do uh, 189 in the Red Book.
and ask, ask you to pray for my brother, Bo. He's uh, had an operation. And he's, he's doing well. He's uh, calm and doing well. And I just ask you to pray for his swift recovery. And also my old sister's in uh, the hospital, and she's having a hard time. So, uh, But I think she is a little bit better. They moved her out of intensive care. She's in a regular room now. So praise God. Thank you. Would you lead us out in a word of prayer? I'm kind of Heavenly Father, we're thankful for the discord this day, this story. So thank you for many people here in the church, and Lord, God bless each and every one of them. God bless the church, the people. Help us to be better people, better witnesses for you. Give us the strength and ability that you'd have us to have, Lord, to get out, witness for you, help the others that are in very need. God bless those that are in the hospital, sick and afflicted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for Brother Mike's testimony. He said there that uh, no better place to be than at the church, you know. And the Bible said there in Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It says, I will stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together. Whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord under the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment and thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, that they shall, pros they shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls, and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. I'm glad to come to church this morning. I'm glad, amen, amen to, to have a place to come and worship. You know, if we have hope in this life only, we are of all men most miserable, the Bible tells us. And I'm glad uh, that my hope is not just in this life. I'm amen. glad, uh, amen, that God loves me this morning. I'm glad to be a child amen. of the living King, amen. I'm glad to be a child of God. And it excites me, amen. I, I just can't get over being saved. I can't get over the change that he has made in my life. If you knew me before I was saved, uh, brother, you would know a miracle because God knows who I was before I was saved. And, yeah. and I'm just glad for the power of my God. The Bible said that in the last days that he said that men should, uh, that there would be those that had a form of godliness, but they would deny the power thereof. But my God has the power to change the vilest sinner and make him clean. Amen. Right. And wash him in his blood. And amen. And amen and take away his sin and I'm so glad amen that he didn't just leave me just like I was but amen he sent me on a highway of holiness uh, and glory be to God I'm just looking for that perfect day that when Jesus comes and amen uh, hallelujah and every knee's going to bow to him uh, and glory be to God I just look forward to seeing the nail prints in my Savior's hands uh, and glory be to God just uh, tell him that I love him and tell him I'm thankful for what he's done for me and my family for the generations to come because you know what? God doesn't just save a, a man. Amen. He saves a man's household. Uh, and glory be to God. Uh, if that man will walk with the Lord, uh, then God will show His power to His children to come. Uh, the Bible says that the just walks in His integrity uh, and His children are blessed after Him. Uh, I tell you that God uh, can change the curse. Amen. I'm so glad for that this morning. Bless His holy name Amen. for what He has done in this world for all of us. Bless His holy name. Amen. I can say to the last four years of my life have been changed. Amen. I have changed for the best. Yeah. Amen. I can say amen to that. Bless Jesus. Amen. Bless Jesus. Bless you, brother. Amen. Anybody have a song request? How about there is a fountain? I love that song because it reminds me of me being that thief that was beside Jesus. 
You know, Jesus said that day to that thief, he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Yeah. And you know what the Bible says right in the middle of the Bible? I don't know if anyone has seen this before or not. But if you look at Psalm 118, it's right in the middle of the Bible. In verse 5, it said, It is better to put trust in the Lord than to have confidence in man. And there, right there, you see a picture of Calvary. You see Jesus right in the middle. You see one man putting his trust in man, and you see another man putting his trust in the Lord right there in the center of the Bible. It is better to trust in the Lord than to have confidence in man. Absolutely. I thank God this morning for that. It's 109 in your end. Yes, ma'am. I believe we do have
What's that? Believing. Believing. Like it's chair. Believing without city. Um, now what our memory verse has been um, John 20. Let's look at that. 20 verses 30 and 31. John 20, John 20, And many other things truly did Jesus. In the presence. In the presence of the Lord. Of his disciples. Which are not written in this book. But these. But these. That are. But these are written. These are written. That he, that might, he might believe that, uh, that Jesus, that Jesus um, is the Christ, is the, Christ the, the Son of God, God and that, that believing, believing you might have, have, might have life, life through, his name. through his name. Good job. Amen. All right. <clears throat> Um, so what what are we what does he want us to believe? Believe that he's the son of God. Right. Amen. 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 <laughs> Jesus is the son of God. Exactly. Why do we need to believe that? So we go to right. So that we can um, we can have life eternal. Um, God loves us, Amen. and He wants us to have life eternal. Um, and He also He wants us to love Him. Um, if we truly, truly believe that Jesus is God's Son, we will love Him. Um, so now we're going to have a new memory verse. And it's going to be in 1 John. Hmm. First John chapter 5. No, we're still going to practice now. Okay. First John chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Oh, no. I don't know if we'll be able to learn all of that or not. But um, we're, we're going to uh, take turns reading. We're going we're gonna to take turns reading it in different ways. Okay? Um, You guys have it? First John chapter 5? First John. Yeah. All right. Chapter five. Now, I'm going to give you a direction, and you're going to read it in that way. Okay? First, I want you to sing verse 1. Okay? Mm -hmm. Let's read verse 1 and sing it. Now, do what you were told. Okay, let's sing verse 1. Whosoever believe that Jesus is the Christ, born, is born of God. And everyone that loveth him, that begat, loveth him also, that is begotten of him. Okay. Now we're going to laugh while we say verse 2. What? Huh? First John. First John. Chapter 5. Verse 1. No, no, you're in the no. Gospel of John, buddy. First John's back here. This is First John. You're in the First John? Oh, wait. Second John. Wait. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. I'm in the First John. <laughs> wait, no, wait. I'm in. What? I need to go way right here. <laughs> okay, now I'm here. Okay. Now, verse 2. We're going to laugh while we're saying verse 2, okay? Three. All right. Ha 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 sweet. Know that we, that we love, love the children, children of God. God. And when we, we love God, He gives commandments. Ha 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 Oh, no, I was supposed to say, do what you were told. Okay. Now we're going to read the next verse, and we're going to read it very slowly. Okay. Do what you are told. 
You guys are going to jump up and down while you read it. <laughs> yeah. Read verse 4 and jump up and down. No, I'm not going to jump up and down. I'm going to walk in place. Okay. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. <laughs> Alright. Oh, because I was jumping up. Yeah, I know. Well, I could either. Well, the next one you'll have to cry. Yeah, yeah, let's read it real sad. <laughs> Alright, let's read verse 5. That's a good idea, Papa. Okay, let's read verse 5. We're going to read real sad. Who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. <laughs> All right. Now, can anybody guess what our or what our lesson is going to be about? What did I tell you to do? I said before you did the action, I told you. I said do what you were told. Oh, we're going to we're going to be our new lesson is going to be about obedience. Okay. Now I've got a little action activity you guys are going to do. I'm going to give you guys a little, little piece of paper with a direction on it, and you're going to act this out, okay? Mm -hmm. These are going to be about be different attitudes, okay? All right. Who's going to be my first one? Me, me. I said first. <laughs> Ray, mm -hmm. you're going to act this one out, and you guys are going to try to guess what it is that he is acting out. Come here. Yeah. Himself. Himself. Sleepy. Sleepy. Bored. Bored. Watching TV. Sad. Tired. Sad. Doing nothing. Yep. Doing nothing. Tired. All day. Tired. Tired. Mama got Good it. Good job. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wish I was doing nothing all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Rusty. You do this one. <laughs> Oh no. Any guesses? Oh no. Oh no. Scared. 
you to do something, you're going to have that kind of attitude. For what? <laughs> confused? <laughs> I am confused. I got it. <laughs> no. Thoughtful? No. Okay. Autumn, I want you to um, stand there. Be okay. To look willing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Willing. Okay, well, these are our different attitudes. Huh? Okay. And we have different attitudes depending on what is going on in our lives. Um, sometimes we can act sleepy. Why might we, we act sleepy? Because we are sleepy. Because you did. Because you didn't get any sleep. You're not sleepy. Okay? Um, how can, why might you act happy? Oh, sure. You see something that makes you happy. Mm -hmm. And you also see something that's different to you. Mm -hmm. like, like if you see a bunny. Mm. <laughs> uh -huh. If you see a bunny, it surprises you. Yeah. Um, why might we act... Um, Sad sometimes. Sad. Because maybe something happens around us that's that's sad. Maybe somebody dies or somebody goes away. Will make us sad. Well, most of us think that situations cause our attitudes and determine how we feel. Hey, guys, quit. Okay. If life goes bad, then we're angry. If life goes well, then we're happy. All right, I want you to make a face that says, life is going well with me. Okay, make a, make a nice happy face. God tells us one sure way that life will go well for us, and that is to display an attitude first. Don't let your circumstances around you determine what your attitude is. Amen. You need to have an attitude first first and not let your circumstances affect it. Now let's find out what that attitude is. Okay, what kind of attitude do we need to have? Now I want you to turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 2. <clears throat> Chapter 2, starting with verse 39. Is Luke after... Matthew, Mark, Luke, no, you're in the, you're in 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John. You need to go to um, the beginning of the New Testament. Chapter 2. Oh. Luke chapter 2. Okay, now go down to verse 39. That's where we're going to start out. Okay. When they had prophesied, prophesied perform, yeah. All. Okay, hold on, hold on, let me read 39. 39. 39. 39. Alright, now I'm going to 
read some, and then I'm going to take little breaks and tell you guys to read, okay? All right, starting at verse 39. And when they had performed all things according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee to their own city of Nazareth. Now, this is Jesus and his parents, okay? Now, Autumn, I want you to read verse 40. Okay. What child are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus. This is, this is Jesus when he was a little boy. He grew and he was strong in spirit. And he was filled with wisdom. And the grace of God was upon him. So this is little Jesus as a boy that we're talking about. About Rusty's age. Yeah. Yep. Now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the, ch the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. Okay, so they went to Jerusalem, and they um, were there for the Passover, and then they were starting back. Well, Jesus stayed behind. There were lots of people there. Jesus stayed behind, and his parents didn't know that he was still in Jerusalem. So they take off there on their way back home. <clears throat> but they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey. So they went a whole day walking and didn't know that Jesus was with them. And they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. So they're looking for him among the people that they're with. <clears throat> and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. And it came to pass that after three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. And all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt, dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Okay, Autumn, I want you to, array. I want you to read verse 49. And he said unto them, How, how is it that ye sought me west? West ye not. West ye not, that I must be about my peers. Fathers. Fathers. Business. Business. But who's he talking about? Who's his father? God. Yeah, that's right. He is the son of God. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. They didn't know what he was taught, what he was, um, they didn't understand, understand what he was saying, that I must be about my father's business. Rusty, you read 51 to 52. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother, mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in his wisdom and structure, and stature, stature and <coughs> in his favor with God and man. Okay. Okay, so where did Jesus live? Where was he from? No, he was from Nazareth. Was from Nazareth. Yeah. Okay. Why did Jesus go to Jerusalem? Why did they go to Jerusalem? No, the for the feast of the Passover. What happened when it was time for Jesus to return home? Yeah, he, stayed. he stayed there. Why do you think it took a day for Mary and Joseph to miss Jesus? Because of his property. 
group. Yeah, it was a big bunch of people there. Like, like he was going around just talking to everybody mm -hmm. else. And stuff. Yeah. Why were Mary and Joseph upset with Jesus? Because they didn't want him to get lost. Mm -hmm. lose him. Right. How did they feel when they were searching for Jesus? How do you think they felt? Worried. They were probably worried. I know I would be having a cow. I would be absolutely worried, teetotally to death. You would probably faint. I would probably faint. What was Jesus doing when his parents found him? He was going to take off to the doctor. Mm hmm. How did Jesus' parents feel when they saw him? They were right. No. They were amazed. They were. That mm -hmm. nothing happened to him. Mm hmm. Was Jesus being disobedient by staying in the temple? He was obeying his father. Right. He was obeying his father. He was obeying God first. Now what happened when Jesus returned to Nazareth? He goes back home with his parents. And what was he like? In verse 51, it says he was subject unto them. That means he was, he was obedient to them. God wants us to be obedient to our earthly parents. <clears throat> now, how did, do you think he obeyed? Do you think that he did what he was told? You know, stomping around like this? No. If his mom, when his mom said, you know, Jesus, let's go, you know, when he was in the temple, do you think he went, oh. all right? Do you think he acted like that? No, he didn't act that way. He wasn't, he wasn't, um, didn't have a bad attitude. He willingly obeyed his parents. Um, and that's the attitude that we need to have. Um, Jesus has given us an example of willing obedience. He obeyed his parents without arguing or complaining. He respectfully answered their questions about where he was and what he had been doing. He knew that they didn't understand. You know, he was he was smarter than they were. Um, like Mary and Joseph, our parents will tell you sometimes ask where you've been doing. Okay, um, the way we the way you talk to your parents, the way we talk to our parents, shows them how we feel about them. Do you think Jesus loved his parents? Yeah, he loved his parents. Um, and he, he spoke to them with respect, and he was, he was obedient to them. Um, it shows, and when we have a willing, about it, willing um, attitude, it shows God whether or not we love him. It's not so much the words we use as it is the way that we say the words. Our attitude can make the same sentence have a different meaning. Okay, let's use this sentence as, as an example. Autumn. If I, if you've um, been outside at the tire swing, and I was in the house, and I didn't know where you were, and I was looking all over the house for you, and then you came in to get a drink of water, and I came up to you and said, Autumn, where have you been? I've been looking for you. How would you answer me? How should you answer me? <sighs> Tell me that you've been at the tire swing. How should you answer me? I want you to say, answer me. Autumn, where have you been? I've been looking all over for you. Oh, that's a tired Okay, you should say it with a good attitude. How would you say it if you were saying it with a bad attitude? I was at the tired swing. What's the matter with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you that yeah. I was waiting on the tired swing. What did you, what? Did you not hear me? Yeah. Really? Um, mm -hmm. You may. Now, what was the difference in the way you said it that time and the way you said it before? I was at the tire swing. What's, what's the difference there? I had an attitude um, with the first one before and the next one was bad. Mm -hmm. Now, which one shows your love? The first one. The first one does. <clears throat> um, we need to, to show our love by being by having a willing attitude. We'll obey willingly. A willing attitude is, a, is an important part of obedience. 
without a willing attitude, we may do what we are asked, but we're not obeying. If we are not obeying, then we are not loving. God commands us to obey. And not only that, we have to realize that just doing it isn't good enough. We need God's help to obey with a willing attitude. Amen. You all agree with that? We need God's help. <clears throat> Sometimes we're, we would rather do things our way and not God's way. Sometimes you do something different than what I tell you to do. So we need some help from God to um, help us to have a willing attitude. Um, and we're going to do something. We're going to uh, go to Ephesians chapter 6 and see what God says. I'm there. Ephesians, yeah. Ephesians chapter 6, verse uh -huh. 1. Verses 1 through 3. There. He is fast. That's what they're for. Uh, let me. Chapter six. Oh, your finger was on it. Okay, can I start right here? Should we remove your hair? No. Start right here, okay? All right, Rusty, won't you read that for us? Verse 4 and 3. Uh -huh. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor thy father and thy mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with thee, and that thou mayest live long on the earth. God promises us that if we obey our parents, life will go well with us. He doesn't say life might go well with you. He said if you, if you obey your parents, life will go well with you. Um, this week, our assignment is going to be, be to use scripture and prayer to willingly obey your parents. I like this one. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take pictures of you guys. Showing your willing attitude faces that you like. Life is going well with me face. I'm going to take pictures of you and I'm going to put it on a little frame. And it's going to have a prayer on it. Okay? And this prayer is going to say, Dear Father, I love my parents. Help me to show my love for them by obeying them willingly. Thank you for your promise that it will go well with me when I obey my, my parents. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's go over our memory verse some more. First John chapter First five. First John chapter five. Okay, let me get there. First John chapter five. Back here. First John. First John chapter five. I'm there. Oh no. <laughs> Let's read the whole thing. First John 5, 1 through 5. 
Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And every one that loveth him that begat, loveth him also that is begotten of him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep his commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? It's a lot to remember. Oh, yeah. A lot. We will. We will just try to remember verses 2. Verses 2. And three, okay. Verses two and three. That's that's what we're going to. If we can memorize that, I think we'll be doing good. Okay. Now we'll work on that at home. Right. You guys want to sing? Chariot along, 
The blessings come down as the prayers go up. The blessings come down as the prayers go up. So build your house on the Lord Jesus Christ. Alright, this is the last one. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. I need wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Wide and deep, wide and deep, there's a fountain flowing wide and deep. Alright. And what kind of attitudes are we going to have when we obey our parents this week? Good. <laughs> Willing. Yes. Willing. Anybody have a song request? <coughs> Mike has one, two, thirty-two, and the mole's broken. Mm -hmm. Starts out like uh, love lifted me. When he love yeah. lifted me, when my soul was sinking deep, when my soul was sinking deep, when my soul was Love, 
his love, out of the angry waves. He's the master of the sea, billows his will away. He, your Savior, wants to be the saved. that somebody else has and they don't have it. They're miserable over possessions. That's why God said, set not your affection on things below, but on what? Things above. above. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad he said that where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Well, the Lord has led me to begin a series of studies on end times. And I believe that end times began when Jesus died on the cross. After Jesus died on the cross, I believe that the last days began. 
I believe that that was the countdown to the end of time when Jesus died upon the cross. Uh, I want to share with you a testimony. You know, a testimony is something good that God has done for you. That's what a testimony is. My mom and I were uh, eating dinner last Sunday after church, and we, we sat there and we talked, and, I, and I, I could not get it off of my heart. It just kept on and kept on and kept on coming to my, to my heart and to my mind, and I just kept, kept talking about it. And I was asking mom, mom, do you think that people will be saved or need to be saved during the millennial reign of Jesus here upon the earth? And we, we talked about that some, and uh, it, it just amazes me the things that the Lord does. Because I woke up at 4.30 Monday morning, and I checked my email, and I get emails, uh, every day I get an email from the Institute for Creation Research, and uh, they have a daily devotional that I read on there every day. And uh, they had... A scripture from Revelation 21 about the nations coming to Christ on the new earth and, and him saving them. And I thought, here it is. Here is, a, here is a, an example of God, uh, of God confirming something that I was just talking about the day before. And I thought, man, that is, I was so excited. I called Dad at 730 on the way to work. And I said, Dad, the Lord sent me an email this morning. And I was so excited about it because uh, I know the Lord had confirmed that. He had confirmed uh, that, that desire in my heart to seek after God. And you know, the Bible says that, uh, that David said that, uh, uh, When thou said unto me, Seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. And so it's good for us to want to seek out the things of God. It's important for us to seek out the things of God. Well, uh, I was very amazed by that event that took place Monday morning. And, uh, but then I was amazed again last night. You see, I, 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 I've been real busy this week at work, and uh, a lot of days I didn't take a lunch. Uh, I just worked straight through without taking a lunch or a break or nothing. And a lot of times what I like to do during the, during the day when I come home at lunch, my favorite thing to do is to listen to Adrian Rogers. I love to listen to Adrian Rogers because he's a very biblical preacher. Uh, he goes by the Bible. And he's not an ear-tickling preacher. Uh, he says, the, says it the way that it is, the way that it's written. And, uh, and so I, I didn't get an opportunity to listen to Adrian as much as I would have liked this week. So last night as I was preparing, uh, the Lord had put this on my heart to draw out this timeline to heaven. Uh, about the things, the events are, that are to come hereafter. The things that we have to look forward to. Amen? And uh, so I sat down and I thought, well, I'm going to listen to Adrian Rogers while I'm drawing out this timeline. And so Adrian Rogers has a website called uh, lwf.org. And it's a loveworthfinding.org. And Adrian puts all of his sermons... Uh, on the, the website, Adrian Rogers actually passed away in 2005. I didn't realize that. Uh, he's in heaven now. Uh, but um, uh, So they, they are continuing on his ministry even though he's not here. And uh, I love that song, that old, gospel, that old gospel song, a hymn says, What will I leave behind? Amen. Isn't it good to think about that you can leave behind the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. And so Adrian left behind the gospel, and as I was sitting here last night writing this out, uh, Adrian, uh, on his website, there's a, he is, they have began a series of sermons called The Edge of Eternity. And I was so blessed by it, because that's not a coincidence, that God put the very same thing on my heart. <clears throat> and last night I listened to two different sermons on the rapture which is what God gave me to talk about this morning. And that's not a coincidence. And uh, it makes me tremble. It makes me tremble because I know it came from God. I know it came from Him. 
Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. We're, uh, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at uh, our timeline to heaven. We're going to begin at Genesis. We're going to briefly touch on some things that, that happened uh, throughout uh, history thus far. And mo mostly we're going to look at what we have to look forward to. Now, uh, I don't claim to be a brilliant theologian. Uh, the only thing I know is what the Word tells me. Amen. I believe what the Word of God says. I don't think that we need to add anything to it or take anything away from it. Amen. I believe that God will give us the understanding that we need. And uh, I'm encouraged to think about the things that we have to look forward to. Amen. You know, uh, ever since I was a child... I just believed that, you know, you believed in Jesus and then one day you died and you went to heaven and that was it. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with thinking, well, you die and then you go to heaven. There's nothing wrong with that. But I want you to know that there's more in the Bible than that. There's more in the Bible. There's more to look forward to than just that. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that that's why this world is so miserable today. Because people don't have hope. People are trying to live for what they can get now. Amen. All I can get now, let me get all my hands, even if it means taking from my neighbor or my brother, right. so that I can have everything I want now, yeah. because I'm not going to have anything afterwards. That's a miserable life. Yes, it is. It's a miserable life. Right. But I want you to know, according to the infallible, that means, that, that means perfect. You can't find any fault in the Word of God. If you have the Spirit of God within you, you will not find any fault with the Word of God. You'll be able to see it as God sees it. Amen? Amen. Oh, you won't see it no more as a sinner sees it, but you'll see it the way that God wants you to see it. Amen? Amen. So let's look at what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. He says, And I, brethren, when I came unto you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God, for I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's one for the folks that like the gossip. Paul said, I determined not to know anything except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If they had known who Jesus really was, they wouldn't have crucified him. Amen. But they were blind. They were blind to the gospel. But as it is written, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love them, love him. But God hath revealed them unto who? Yes. Us. By His Spirit. Amen. Babes, brother. Yes, sir. Amen. Babe. Unto us by His Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. The Spirit of God knows all these things. You know that all the riches of knowledge and wisdom dwell in Christ Jesus? That's right. Yes. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. So, a man knows the things about man. God knows the things about God. So, brother, we must have the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of who? God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Brother, I tell you what, there is no amount of tuition, 
at any seminary or any university in this world that you can get the spiritual things of God. There's no amount of money you can do. You can pay to get the spiritual things of God. And what's it say right there? The things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. Amen. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural thing, man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. They are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know him because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Amen. You know, when the blind man was there, and he says, uh, he asked the Pharisees, do you want to become his disciple? And they said, you were altogether born in sins, and dost thou teach us? And they cast him out of the synagogue. And when Jesus found him, he says, Dost thou believe on the Son of Man? He says, I believe, Lord, who is he? He said, It is he that talketh with thee. And is now here. Amen. And he worshiped Jesus. Mm -hmm. And you know, Jesus gives us these things through his spirit. They're spiritually discerned. You know, the carnal mind is not subject to the word of God. Right. It can't be. The carnal mind, that means our fleshly, earthly, given mind, is not subject to the Word of God. In other words, will not be submissive to the Word of God. Right. It can't be. Because our flesh is enmity. It is the enemy of God. That is why we need the Spirit of the living God inside of us in order to see God's will, to see God's plan, to see even the things that it's not seen by eye, it's not entered into the heart of man, but God shows them us by His Spirit. And oh, what a blessing it is. You see, just as Robin taught there earlier through the Holy Spirit, that uh, if our attitude is prepared before the trial comes, if we have the right attitude, brother, we'll weather the storm. I mean, glory be to God. Jesus said, in this world ye will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the world. Right. He's overcame it already. Who is he that overcometh the world but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Amen. Amen. You overcome trials. You overcome temptations because your attitude is prepared already. Your heart already has an attitude of hope looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus. Right. When we have that attitude, glory be to God. Hallelujah. The devil don't have a chance. Right. Amen. He don't have a chance right. when we have that attitude on our heart. I'm so glad for that this morning because I couldn't do that on my own yeah. and you couldn't do it on your own. Yeah. But God sent His Son for us Amen. that we could have that. That we can walk in this dark world and let our light shine among men. That they might see the goodness of God in us and glorify our Father that's in heaven. Oh, aren't you glad for that today? Let's pray together. Father, almighty Savior God, in the name of Jesus, I'm so thankful this morning, Father, for your wonderful name. Father God, your precious and holy word that you've given us. I pray, Father God, Lord, that you might open our eyes, open our hearts, open our mind and our souls to your word. Help us, Father, to grow in your knowledge and your grace. Father, that we might proclaim your gospel. Father God, Lord, that we would willingly tell the world who Jesus is. Oh, Lord God, not for our glory, not that, dear Lord, that we might be puffed up, but that, Lord God, we might bring you honor and glory. Father God, for you are worthy in Jesus' name, and amen. amen. So uh, when we look here at this timeline, we have a timeline, we have a pathway that we're taking to heaven. Amen? We, have a, we got a lot to look forward to. Amen. amen. We got a lot to look forward to. 
And so uh, uh, here we have a, a timeline. Uh, this is beginning at creation in Genesis 1 and 2. And, uh, and uh, then down here we have a, a, a timeline. And what this represents is that this can happen at any time. And what this is is Hebrews 9 and 27. And the Bible says in Hebrews 9 and 27, For it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this, the judgment. Any time, any time throughout history or throughout the future on earth, when a man dies, he will go immediately, he's going to go one of two places. Okay? 2 Corinthians 5 and 8 says, For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Okay? So when you die, if you die before the rapture, if you die before Christ calls His church, you go immediately to the presence of the Lord. Before Christ came, you went to paradise. Luke chapter 16. Okay? Before Christ came and died on the cross in the Holy Spirit, and He went and preached to the spirits in prison, and He led captivity captive. Amen? Before that, you went to paradise. But now that Christ has came and ascended to the right hand of the Father, taken His blood into the tabernacle in heaven and prepared a place for us to come. Amen? Amen? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Right. Amen? Now, there's two places you can go. If you die and you're outside of the grace of God, in hell you will lift up your eyes, being in torment. Okay? So there, you can either, if you're saved, you go to be with the Lord immediately. Your spirit goes to be with the Lord immediately. Your body remains here. But your spirit goes to be with the Lord. Amen? But the Bible tells us in Luke 16 and 23 that when the rich man died, in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments. So at any time, whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, it is appointed unto men once to die, and after this the judgment. There will come a great white throne judgment at the end of time. Okay? When whoever dies outside of the Lord, whoever dies outside of grace, goes to hell to wait final judgment at the great white throne judgment. And then they are cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Okay? This is, that is what Hebrews 9 and 27 teaches us, that is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Now, we have the days that are to come. Uh, Jesus, uh, the rapture, uh, if, if you are raptured, uh, you, you are in the grace of Jesus Christ, and He calls His church, you're going out of here without dying. Yeah. You're not going to die. Right. Amen? It, it's going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. So let's just look. Let's look at some events that happened in the past. We see that creation happened in Genesis 1 and 2. And a lot of folks would say, well, the Bible contradicts itself because there's, there's things that are taught in one chapter, and then in another chapter it tells almost the same thing, but it tells something different. Well, it's like that with Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2. The Bible tells us at the end of Genesis chapter 1, that he created man. Okay? But then he goes in, in Genesis chapter 2, and he gives more detail. And that word man is not, does not just mean male. It means mankind. It means humans. God created mankind. That word man means mankind. So, in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible teaches us that he made man. And then in Genesis chapter 2, he gives more detail about how he took the rib from Adam. He caused a sleep to fall on Adam, and he took the rib from Adam and made Eve. So there's no contradiction in Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2, but it's just more detail. So from that time, uh, the Bible told us uh, in, uh, after the creation uh, that the world became wicked. There was violence in every place. The Bible tells us how that it, it grieved God because He had made man. And He said, well, I'm going to destroy the world. So we see that the flood came. Okay? And, but in, before the flood came, God said, My spirit will not always strive with man. He says, but it's going to be 120 years. 
So for 120 years while Noah and his family were building the ark, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. He preached salvation for 120 years. And you know how many people were saved? Eight. Over 120 years, he found grace in the eyes of the Lord, and over 120 years, eight people were saved. His family. His family was saved. Glory be to God. The flood came in Genesis 6 and 7, and this was judgment. Judgment came. But before the judgment came, before the judgment came, Enoch, the Bible says that Enoch walked with God, and then he was not, for God took him. God took him. Oh yes, amen. The Bible even preaches about the book of Enoch in the book of Jude, which is right before Revelation. It talks about that in the book of Enoch, there was a book that Enoch wrote. And he said that the Lord will come with ten thousands of his saints. Enoch prophesied. Sure. All the way back in Genesis, before the first destruction, Enoch prophesied that the Lord was going to come one day with ten thousands of his saints. Oh boy, we got a lot to look forward to. Mm -hmm. Enoch was raptured. He walked with God. Before, before, before God took him, he had this testimony that he pleased God. By faith, Enoch was translated, is what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11. It was by faith. How do we please God? By faith. You can't please God outside of faith. Hebrews 11 and 6, for without faith it is impossible to please God. Right. Now faith, brother, I could believe, I could believe that I could go out here and jump off this hill and fly. And I could say, oh, I got all the faith in the world that I can go out there and jump off that hill and fly. And I could just believe it in all my heart and I'd go out there and jump off that hill and brother, I'd land right in the creek. Our faith is in the substance of God's Word. Yes. Now faith is the substance. Faith is the substance. The substance that we have our faith in is the promises of God. It's not in something that we just concoct in our mind. Faith is believing what God has promised and that God's going to perform it. That's, right. That's right. faith. Enoch walked with God. He had this testimony that he pleased God. It's impossible to please God without faith. So Enoch had faith sure. in what God had promised. And God took him. When it came, before the flood, God took him in Genesis 2. And he took, him, he took Noah's family and he spared them. Why? Why did he spare them? Because the seed had to be spared. The seed had to be spared for you and I today. Amen? He goes on. In Exodus, we see how that uh, uh, Noah was a type. Noah was a type of Christ. And then we see how that in the Exodus, how that Moses led the children of Israel out of bondage, a type of our salvation. He led them out of bondage, out of Egypt, into the, into the promised land. And, and, it, and it's a type of salvation. Moses was a type of the Lord. And they came to the promised land. And in the promised land, there was Joshua which is another name for Yeshua, which is Jesus. Amen. Joshua is actually called Jesus in the book of Hebrews. Amen. Joshua was a type of Jesus leading them into the promised land where the, the, we, we read about 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles of the Kings. And we see how that there was peace. There was peace with God's people when King David, another type of Christ, was here and he ruled on the throne. There was peace in Jerusalem at that time. Brother, after David had, God had put out all of David's enemies, there was peace. Solomon lived in peace. He didn't have to fight like David fought. God made peace for his people and then came another that God's people began uh, to uh, wander away. They began to worship idols. They began to sacrifice their uh, children to false gods. Listen, people do this today. People will, will, without even realizing it, 
lead their children into covetousness and idolatry through the things, the pleasures of sin in this world. People today are sacrificing, are, are killing babies by the millions. Aborting babies today. They were doing this just before this next judgment came. They were doing this very same thing. And the Bible said that Elijah was taken. A whirlwind came. And Elijah had a, had a, a friend that walked with him, a servant that walked with him named Elisha. And Elisha said, I, I want a double portion. He said, ask me what you, what you would have of me uh, before I go. And he said, I want a double portion of your spirit. Uh, and he says, if you see me go, then you'll get what you've asked for. Yeah, that's right. And the Bible said uh, that Elijah, that a whirlwind came and raptured Elijah to heaven. Took him to heaven. Then judgment came. Babylon. God's people were carried away. You can read the book of Jeremiah. You can read the book of Lamentations and you can understand what's going to happen in this world. It's getting ready to happen again. Right. It's getting ready to happen again. Are you with me this morning? Yeah. It's getting ready to happen again. That's right. Then prophecy came. Okay, here we have creation. We have the promised land. Then prophecy came. And then we see that Jesus came. And Jesus came and he gave us the fullness of the gospel. The gospel, God's law, was completely fulfilled in him. And we see uh, even here in the book of Ecclesiastes, look, this is not some new thing. You can see the pattern throughout time that has happened with God's people, with God's church you can see the pattern that has happened in the Word of God. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, is that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. You can see the pattern that Enoch was taken. He was translated right before the judgment. You can see the pattern that Elijah was taken right before the judgment. And now we can see that after Jesus has come, that we have the day of salvation. And there's coming a time when God's people are going to be taken. Listen, people are worried about today, even Christians are letting their minds and their hearts wander about the last times. The last days began when Christ died upon the cross. Peter preached as if Jesus was coming tomorrow. That's how Peter preached. Yes, sir. He knew that the last days were coming. He knew that the last days were here. We are today, we are in the day of salvation. Nothing has to be fulfilled for the rapture to take place. Did you hear me this morning? Nothing has to be fulfilled. There are no signs that have to be given or fulfilled for the rapture to happen. It is going to happen, brother, like a thief in the night. It is going to come and there are going to be many who are not prepared. People are looking for signs and seasons and looking for miracles and they think, well, maybe then I'll get right when I get afraid enough that Jesus is getting ready to come back. Look, He's going to come in an hour that you think not. He's coming in an hour that you think not and those that are left behind are going to see what it was like when Jeremiah wrote the book of Lamentations. They're going to see what it was like. Read the book of Lamentations. You want to see faith? You want to see true faith in a servant of God? Oh, it amazes me how that Jeremiah wrote uh, that it is of the Lord's mercies that were not consumed, that His compassions fell not. They are new every morning. Great is the faithfulness. Jeremiah wrote that as there was children and women uh, being slaughtered and murdered and all kinds of horrible things going on. Right. Where the most beautiful city in the world was the, where Solomon's temple was. Brother, it was turned upside down. Yeah, right. Jeremiah said great is God's faithfulness right in the middle of that. Brother, it's a sign of what's to come. It is a sign of what's to come. Now I wrote this word here, harpezo. People say the word rapture isn't in the Bible. But brother, the, the, the term, the understanding 
The definition of the word rapture certainly is. Jesus even himself used it. Jesus himself used this Greek word harpezo. It's what it's, it's what it, it's, this word means to be taken by force. Taken by force. There were times when they wanted to take Jesus by force. There were times Jesus, Jesus even used the term when he said in John chapter 10, he says that my, children, my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they follow me and I give unto them eternal life. Neither shall any man pluck, pluck them from my hand. That word pluck is harpezo. Pluck. God is going to pluck his children out of here. Amen. That's what's going to happen. He's going to pluck his children out of here. And it's going to be, you're not going to have any say in it. You're not going to have any chance to prepare. It's just going to happen. Yeah. It's just going to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm looking for it. Amen. I'm watching for it. I want to be ready. Right. I want to be ready. I don't want to be found asleep. Let us awake, brother, and then put on the armor of light, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Brother, it's coming, and we need to be ready. Paul, in 2 Corinthians, let's just look at a couple examples of being carried away, raptured. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 2. Paul was raptured. Paul was raptured, and brother, what a gift. Paul was raptured, and he came back. He was raptured to the third heaven and then returned. The Bible says it is not expedient for me, doubtless to glory, I will come to visualize visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. You know, it had happened 14 years ago, Paul. He couldn't forget it. Something happened to him, he couldn't forget it. Man, when you have an experience with the Lord, you can't forget it. Yeah. It sticks with you. I knew a man above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell, or whether out of the body I cannot tell, God knoweth, such an one caught up to the third heaven. Now we see the heaven here, the clouds, and, we see, and, that, and, that's, and that's the first heaven. And then there's the second heaven, which is where the stars, the moon, the planets, the sun, that's the, seven, the second heaven. And then there's a third heaven, that you can't see with your eye, your carnal eye. But you know it's there in your heart. Bless you, Brother Mike. You know it's there in your heart. You know it's there because that's where, hallelujah, that's where the throne of God is. Yes, amen. amen. That's what Paul was called up to. He was called up. He was harpezo. He was called up to the third heaven. Jude chapter 1 and verse 23. Here it's used again, the book of Jude. Now, the book of Jude is a very small book, but very powerful. Amen? The Bible tells us here in Jude 1 and 23, And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire. There it is. Pulling them out. That's harpezo. That's harpezo. That's the Greek word harpezo. Pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Amen? Uh, uh, the book of Jude here is talking about having compassion on people. And that, that uh, uh, by telling them the gospel, that you're saving them from the fire, hating even the garments spotted by flesh. So there's another example of the word harpezo, right there in the book right. of Jude. So we see that now we're in the day of salvation. Now is the time of salvation. I've heard thee an accepted time. I've secured thee, the Bible says. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The day of the Lord is coming. It, brother, we need to be prepared for the day of the Lord. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to prepare our children. And we need to prepare our children's children. And we need to proclaim these things in our homes in our hearts, and we need to live our lives as if, brother, Jesus is coming. Because, brother, I don't want to be found in Him having mine own righteousness, which is of the law, but the righteousness which is of God by faith. Because, brother, there's going to be a judgment that comes upon this world. There's going to be a tribulation that comes upon this world. Listen this morning. 
we can go out here today and we can see all kinds of terrible things that happen. Jesus said, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many will wax cold. In today's society, you can go many places and you can find all kinds of hate. You can find all kinds of evil. But there's going to come a time when God's church, God's people, are going to be taken out of here. And it's going to be much worse than you can imagine. It's going to be much, much worse than you can ever imagine. Listen, I'm, I'm thankful for a mommy and daddy that showed me love and sheltered me for as long as I could, as long as they could. But one day I grew up and I became a man and I realized how cruel this world could be. I realized how cruel people can be and how wicked this world is. And I want you to know that it's going to be much worse when there's no church. The Holy Spirit himself will be gone. You say, Brother Troy, where do you get that from? Look with me, if you would, Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 10. God gives us the scripture in Revelation 3. He gives us about the church of Laodicea. It is the only church that he does not say that I have something good to say about. He says, I know that you're lukewarm, is what he says. But let's look at verse 10. It says, Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will, will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. This isn't a judgment in heaven. This isn't a judgment of the great white throne. This is a judgment that's coming upon this earth like it did in Lamentations time. Even worse, there's going to be, brother, a great tribulation like this world has never experienced is what Jesus called it. Jesus called it the great tribulation, the great test, the great temptation is another word. As it says right here, the hour of temptation which shall come upon the whole world to try them upon the earth. So we see in Revelation 10 that God says that if we keep His Word, as Jesus told us in John chapter 8, that if ye continue in my Word, then are ye my disciples indeed. Brother Mike hit the nail right on the head this morning. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Brother, when I think of the alternative, hallelujah, I'm glad to come this morning. I'm glad, amen. When I think of what, what, where he brought me from, when I think of, like the old song says, when I think of what he's done and where he's brought me from, i got so much to thank him for. Amen, Amen brother. That's, that's the attitude that we need to have today in the church of God. Amen. Uh, so uh, we, we see in Revelation 10 and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we see uh, an example of the rapture that's, that's going to take place. The Bible, it starts out, and he says, Behold, I show you a mystery. Now, a mystery is something that was hidden at one time. Christ was a mystery. We read it there in 1 Corinthians 2. We speak the hidden of this world, the wisdom of this world, uh, hidden wisdom of God in a mystery. Right. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, for not, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So a mystery is something that is hidden but is now revealed. That's, right. That's something that used to be hidden but now it's been revealed. The Bible says here in, uh, in 1 Corinthians oh my, oh, I'm wrong. in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 <clears throat> verse 51 Behold I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep not all going to die. Amen. We shall not all sleep, but we all shall all be changed in a moment. How fast is a moment? It's a bad of an eye. That's fast, brother. In a moment. God's not going to have to sit there and, and, and pray for an hour and, and say all that. God, God's going to say it and it's going to happen. 
just as this word, this is all of everything was created. God's going to speak it, and it's going to happen. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, there's no time to get ready. You know what? We woke up late for uh, church this morning. We got up. We woke up at 9:30. I forgot to set the alarm. And I, and I don't usually sleep that late, brother Jim. But I came running in there in the living room, and I said to Rusty and then I said, "Guys, we got 30 minutes, and we are hitting the road. I get dressed now. We have 30 minutes to get ready, though. Amen. You're not going to have 30 minutes when Jesus comes. There's not going to be 30 minutes." In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. This corruptible body is going to put on incorruption. That means this body, brother, it goes back to the dust. But it's going to put on incorruption. It's not going to become dust. It's not going to go back to become dirt. It's going to be a glorified body. Like Jesus. And this mortal shall must put on immortality. Mortal means that you can die. Mortal means that your body can your your body can get sick, it can hurt, it gets hungry, but you're going to become immortal. Immortal. When this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then the, the it shall be brought to pass the saying that is written: Death is swallowed up. In victory, Jesus overcame death. Amen. When he said in Revelation chapter 1, he said, I am he that was dead and is alive and, is alive, and am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and death. Yeah. Jesus overcame this. The Bible says that, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. You want to overcome death? There's only one way to do it. It's through Jesus. It's through Jesus. Be prepared. Be prepared, brother. It's coming. 1 Thessalonians, look with me. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. The Bible says, I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep. Ignorant there means not understanding, not knowing or not realizing. He's not meaning that in a negative term. We use that word today in a, in a negative term. God's not using that in a negative term. God says, I want you to know this. I want you to believe this. I want it to be rock solid inside of your heart, is what God's saying. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others that have no hope. There it is. There's those that don't have hope in this world. They're sorrowful, is what it says there. They're sorrowful because they don't have hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, do you believe that this morning? Amen. Do you believe that Jesus died and rose again? Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with Him. Glory be to God. So he says God's going to bring them which is for this we say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Now wait a minute brother Troy. You said that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Yes. When you die, your spirit goes to be with the Lord. But when Christ returns, your body is going to meet your spirit and it's going to be glorified. It's going to be glorified. This corruptible body is going to put on incorruption. Brother, glory be to God, it's, it's going to be amazing because the Bible told us even when Jesus died upon the cross that the bodies that the souls of them, those that had slept, were seen walking the streets when Jesus uh, died on the cross. The Bible says, The Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. There's the word harpazo. Shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. 
Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Yeah. Listen, brother. Christ is going to descend from heaven with a shout. He's going to step out in a cloud of glory and he's going to say, come up hither. He's going to tell us to come and we're going to go meet him in the clouds. Yeah. That's going to be the rapture. It's going to take place. Now, there's many things. The Bible, I'm so glad this morning that the Bible is not a, uh, for lack of a better term, something that is read linear. In other words, you read it here and you read it there and then this is one, two, this is three, this is four, this is five. Because sometimes you might read chapter one and then you read chapter two and it's taking you back to chapter one again. Sometimes you might read something in one part of the Bible and he's actually talking about something that's going to take place way up here. Yeah. Way over, way over in, 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 the last, in, the, in the tribulation period or during the millennial reign. Or maybe even after the millennial reign. He may be talking about And that's why we need the Spirit of God. See, man will try to look through the Bible and try to go through it in sequence. And well, it don't make sense. It's contradicting itself. No. No. It takes the Spirit of God. And then we compare oh. spiritual things with spiritual things. And then, brother, it becomes, it becomes more clear to us. Jesus, in Matthew chapter 24... Matthew chapter 24, they asked Jesus about the end of time. They asked Christ about the end of time and about the different things that were going to happen. In verse 21 in chapter 24, Jesus said, Then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since before the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Lord willing, and if the church don't rise next Sunday, we'll study about the Great Tribulation. Some more about the Rapture and about the Great Tribulation. Uh, but when we look here in uh, verse 36, Jesus is specifically preaching, he is specifically teaching about the time uh, that he'll come. Listen, the Bible tells us here that that, that day and hour knoweth no man in verse 36, No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, remember, the days of Noah, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Listen, people are not going to be in a merry state during the Great Tribulation. The Bible says here that it's going to be eating, drinking, giving in marriage until the flood came. So glory be to God. Brother, things are going to be continuing just as they are, just as regular, just everyday life. Just as it is now. Just as we're going through our lives today. As we're going through each and every day living out our lives. And all of a sudden it's going to happen. Christ is going to step out in a cloud and he's going to say, come up. The trumpet's going to sound, and we're going to go and meet him in the clouds. Amen. Glory be to God. It's exciting to look forward to it. He says, and, he, and they knew not until the flood came and took them away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the meal. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch, therefore. Watch. He says, be ready. Watch. For ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, what watch the thief would come, he would have watched. It would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed Blessed, that means happy, happy, content. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. Brother, there's things, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it, to studying about it, uh, that's going to happen in the millennial reign. Shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if, that's evil, that, if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. Here's someone who's not willing. Oh, they might be doing things, 
but not willingly, not in willing obedience. My Lord delayeth his coming, and he shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what Jesus is telling us is be ready. The time is coming. Noah preached for 120 years. And there were many that could have gotten into that ark. There were many that could have gotten into that ark and been prepared. There were many that could have been prepared here in the time of, of, of David, when David was king and when Solomon was king. There were many that could have been prepared. They could have, they could have went and visited the widows. And they could have went and healed the sick. But Jesus, when he preached in Luke chapter 5, the Bible said that Jesus preached and he said the only one who went was Elijah. Elijah was the only one that went and visited the widow. And went and healed Naaman. Told him to dip in the river seven times. That's what Jesus said. And they got mad at Jesus. And they took him and they were going to throw him off the hill. That was the first time he ever preached. He stood up and he preached in the synagogue. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me to preach the gospel. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory be to God. Brother, now is the time for us to be ready. Now is the time for our hearts to be right with God. I don't want anybody to be left behind. Amen. I don't want anybody to have to go through this tribulation that's going to try the whole world. I don't want any. But brother, listen, you don't, you don't just come to God just to escape hell. You don't come to God just to escape tribulation. You come to God because of who He is and that He loves you. And He gave His Son for you. Oh, it amazes me. It amazes me that God loved us so much that He sent His only begotten Son to die on a cross that we could live. That we could glorify and serve Him for all eternity. Oh, what a Savior that we have. Does anybody have a song? There was a 14-year-old boy walking a trap down a hurricane. Why do they have to have earphones and stuff? Not paying attention and got killed. Yeah. I tell you, I am puzzled about the things like that. Yeah. I, uh, I don't ever worry about nothing, but I worry about that child. Yeah. And uh, like I said, we can be here maybe tonight, maybe not in the morning. Yeah. But I'll tell you. My heart goes out for that family down there, and every family. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just the way I feel. And if I don't feel that way, I ain't enjoy my body. Yeah. Bless your heart, Mike. You know, the Lord, when God made this earth, He made everything good. Yes. Mm -hmm. The Bible said the Lord saw it and that it was good. But it took man. It took man to corrupt this world and make this world sinful. And it's man's, it's not God. It's man's doing that brings sin upon us. Right. God loves us, and God wants only good things for us. But it's man who decides. It's man who chooses the path of sin. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir, it is. What about 117 in the last book? 117. What's that, buddy? Where did I go? Oh, amen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.